I was on the NIH study sections for many, many years. Uh, and I was funded the very first year I was a, a college professor, I was an assistant professor, and on study sections that first year because I had invented a technology called photo friendly labeling that was uh, widely touted as being a, you know, a, a, a very good technique you know, in biochemistry for looking at certain enzyme structure and function, et cetera. And uh, to make a long story short, I was funded probably straight for 25, 26 years at least on the same kind of project and uh, sometimes double funded. At one time I had a, a program to uh, make these uh, compounds that were very useful in di diagnosis, et cetera, and I had one to, that was concentrating on Alzheimer's disease because our preliminary data had shown that we could detect major biochemical differences between a normal brain tissue, the enzymes that were active, and Alzheimer's disease where certain enzymes were almost 80 to 99 percent inhibited. And this gives you a key as to what's going wrong in the Alzheimer's disease brain. And I got a five-year program project grant to study that. And uh, at that time, what I knew, uh, you know, reading a lot up on, reading up on Alzheimer's disease, is that it's not genetically inherited. I mean, you can have two parents with Alzheimer's disease have children that never get it. And a study uh, from 500 sets of identical twins from World War II showed that one identical twin could get Alzheimer's and the other one would not. So, I mean, it's, there's a slong, there is a genetic susceptibility, so there's a strong correlation with, between t twins, but it's not absolute. And that tells you there's got to be a susceptibility to an external toxin. And at that time, people were looking for that, and they thought it was aluminum. I mean, some reports had come out saying it was aluminum. Uh, Dr. Marksberry at the University of Kentucky had found elevated mercury in the brains of Alzheimer's patients versus uh, normals, age-matched normals. And uh, so I thought looking at heavy metals would be the way to go. So I did a set of studies showing, uh, testing what heavy metals would do this. And mercury was one of them I put in. And at that time, I had no concern about amalgam fillings, anything regarding mercury toxicity. But the, the, the phenomenal data that came out was that mercury, and only mercury, would cause the same biochemical abnormalities as you saw in Alzheimer's disease using our technology for evaluating uh, you know, the activity of certain enzymes. It showed that the tubulin was totally dysfunctional. Mercury knocks that out very quickly in our, in our, in, in not only in uh, control homogenous, but if we expose uh, rats to mercury vapor, their tubulin after a period of time just dissipated like you'd see in an AD brain. Uh, and creatine kinase, uh, which is an enzyme that's 99% inhibited in the AD brain relative to age matched controls. And of course, being a biochemist, I know that enzyme quite well. I was the one who uh, isolated and identified its uh, nucleotide binding site. And it had a sulfur in it, a very reactive sulfur. And other people before me had shown that that sulfur was critical to the activity of the enzyme. Of course, that sulfur is what mercury is most uh, highly attracted to. And the third one was glutamine synthetase. It's, uh, it's known uh, that glutamate levels are elevated in Alzheimer's disease brain, and this is the enzyme that removes glutamate from the synapse in a, in a brain after a neurotransmission. So we had three key enzymes, and everyone thought that was great. No one's ever said I was wrong. Every matter of fact, they say I'm right. There's no doubt about the fact that the observation's right. And when I got into trouble was when I said mercury caused this. And I got my next grant back, and I had that data in there and the progress report, et cetera, and as a, something I wanted to study further. How could you reverse it? How could you address it? What was the effect of, uh, say, things like lead and aluminum, uh, you know, co-intoxicants on how much mercury would require toxicity? Because I knew that lead plus mercury is, a, is not, a, toxicities are not additive, they're synergistic. I mean, one plus one will equal 10, 20, 100. And uh, when I got the uh, review back, uh, the scientist part, part of it was fine. They knew I could do the studies. They knew I had the tissues. But at the end, there was this kind of thing, uh, Dr. Haley, and it said something to the effect, Dr. Haley has to realize we don't need to see any more of these kind of studies. And my grant, uh, uh, there were some other comments in there that were ridiculous. And so I challenged that grant. NIH has a very fair system that if you don't like and you think people uh, were incorrect in making value judgments about what you have said you're going to do, that you can challenge it. So that I challenged it. It was sent to another study section. And the other study section said, Dr. Haley's right. These, these critiques, some of them, are, are 
ridiculously wrong, and so I got my grant. But the next time my grant went in, it was triage. In other words, it's just, this is a, maybe fine research, but we just don't want to do it anymore. And so uh, since that time, I've never gotten another NIH grant, and it, it coincided with uh, the report that mercury causes amalgams, and there are a lot of people that don't like that, and, and I would point out to anyone listening, I've never been invited to an Alzheimer's conference to present my data, and it's very, very dramatic. I mean, it is dramatic. No one else has identified <clears throat> anything exposed to humans that would cause the production of the major diagnostic hallmark and three of the major biochemical abnormalities you find in Alzheimer's disease. Because the people in Calgary, Canada, did studies on neurons and culture and showed exactly what I showed, that mercury and only mercury causes the breakdown and the depolymerization of tubulin off of the neural fibril producing neurofibrillary tangles, which is the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. Those were the same people who did that that did the rat studies with me, you know, and where we tested the brains after they exposed their rats to mercury vapor, showing that, again, they had an AD-like brain. So it's, um, it's, it's somewhat uh, disconcerting that you think that perhaps political uh, people have, uh, have some control over NIH, and if they like what you're producing, fine, but if it's politically uncomfortable, it's just not going to happen.